And we're here to have that conversation. We're talking the World Cup. It's the wrap-up moment for us. We started with you, and during the tournament, we're also here to do the discussions. And Kujo, great delight, wouldn't you say? Um, some pretty good matches witnessed during this tournament. A tournament that, that many of the bookmarkers would say that uh, they lost their best their bets even after the first match it just beggared belief yes, at some point yes, the, the teams that were dropping out like flies in the in the first round of, of this tournament uh, you know the the, the the cup holders uh you know uh, germany went home yes they did and uh, several others followed um, i was banking my hopes on argentina I spent a then lot you of money on to England, England. Like me. I transitioned, I transitioned to England from Brazil. They carried my hopes far, <laughs> but um, I, even I even got a jersey. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to yes. attach to you my. You were English more shop. disappointed than I was. Yes, I was. Yes, yes. Declared, yeah. But anyway, that's what? where that's where we have uh, Coach uh, Joseph De Graft here, as well as our own Benedict also to help us uh, do the discussions. But um, I go with you first. Yeah, what a show, eh? What a show! 2018 World Cup. Finally at an end. France have picked it up. I want to know from you, coach. Surprised? Not at all. Um, I think right from our early um, shows, I mentioned that Croatia was the best team in the tournament. Yes, sir. They were cracking. I remember. You remember? They yeah, were yeah, cracking. Yeah, and the French, everybody was saying, oh, they don't look... Because everybody's expecting pretty. No, they came to win the tournament. They realised that pretty does not win tournaments. Effective does. And Deschamps, that's what he went effective and they got their just desserts. The two finalists deserve to be there. Croatia were beaten by a good team and they should not be disappointed at all. The thing that I'm disappointed with Croatia, I think they will be disappointed is that a lot of their players are not, you know, ready. They won't be there for the next World Cup. What a shame. Yeah. Because if they had some younger players in the system to go through, I, I would look forward to seeing them in the next World Cup. Mm. But um, great show. Great show. I say. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was going to say, I mean, watching that final, there was so much expectation on Croatia. Yes. Um, because of how they had brawled their way to this, this, uh, this stage. And rightfully so. Indeed. But was there really ever any hope of them beating a team like France that had kept developing, adapting, evolving through this, this, uh, this, this tournament? Yes. Was there really any realistic hope there was. The, the realistic hope is that France might mess up. You see, when you go into a match, you go with full confidence, you have your strategy. And part of the thing is that you are hoping that your strategy can knock the other team off their pedestals or take them off their normal tracks and you gain the advantage. Croatia have done fantastic. For a country, four million people, reach the World Cup final? Unprecedented. For me, 10 out of 10 for Croatia. Um, they were beaten by a much better team. They should not be disappointed. They have performed superbly. And for me, they've given me great joy. Their football was superb. They, I mean, the, the only part of their disappointment was when they played Russia. Yeah. I think they nicely let Russia look good, you know, because <laughs> uh, the Russian team, for me, are not good. But somehow, all the teams they played made them look good, and it's good for the tournament. But um, that's the only thing that Downer that I would have on the tournament. But Croatia, France, superb final. Croatia fully deserve to be there. They have performed. Hmm. And somebody was saying, oh, the best team didn't win the tournament. The best team is the one who wins. It's about winning. It's not about looking good and, you know, and going home. But it's about winning the tournament. So I think the best team won it. The two best finalists made it to the final. Great fun. Benedict, what does this mean for France? I mean, uh, Didier uh, Deschamps has been, has been here in 98 as a player. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and now he's won this thing for his country, you know, as a, as a coach. Mm. What, what, what does it mean for, for football in France? Mm. Well, he actually becomes a third player to do so after Zagallo of uh, Brazil and then, <coughs> sorry, uh, Van Bergkamba of Germany. But, uh, well, for France, it looks good for them, especially losing the 2016 final, which they hosted with some of the same players in this team playing in the final of that competition. That competition, easily when they started, you could predict that France will win the competition because they played some great football in that tournament, only for Portugal to beat them in the finals. So for Didier Deschamps and the players, they had at the back of their minds that we didn't want to repeat what happened 
two years ago when we hosted the 2016. Well, we've talked about Croatia, we've talked about other teams. We can't go in and let what happened previously to happen to us. And especially when, uh, you know, going into this final, we said that every 20 years, we get a new winner. France themselves were a new winner in 1998. So they also knew that in 2018, Croatia, who have never won the competition before, could become the new winner. And they didn't want that to repeat itself. Mm. So it, it meant so many things to them. One, to go and avert what happened to them when they hosted the competition, the disappointment at home, hosting and winning, which ended hosting and, you know, uh, crying. And then this time, they get the opportunity to go out there and win. That's how come yesterday Paris uh, was amazing, how people celebrated. Up to this morning, I've been seeing pictures of people still celebrating. Can we talk about the whole tournament for mm. a bit? You know, we'll come back to the final later. But I want to start from a, an unlikely uh, angle, mm. the officiating. Yeah. VAR makes a debut, you know, so the game is evolving, right? Yeah. So tell me what you, you both think about the quality of officiating this time around. Four red cards in the entire tournament mm -hmm. and a bucket load of yellows, right? Yeah. But what does this mean, uh, you know, for the evolution of officiating? I think it's a fantastic move. VAR is long, long overdue. Football is going in the, you know, backwards by not introducing VAR much, much earlier. I think VAR has enhanced this tournament. Less red cards because of the VAR. Yeah. You see, the players now know that you're much less likely to get away with it. So you will only push your luck if you have to. And if there's no choice and you have to do a professional tackle that gives you that second yellow card, um, you will do it. But otherwise, be very careful. And I think that's why it's been probably one of the cleanest I think the cleanest yeah. World Cups ever. You look at the decisions on point. Mm. You may have yeah. one or two that you can flag, but ultimately you get to find that um, the decisions reverting to VAR yes. ultimately got about 90% of them right. That's right. Mm. The only thing that I have is with the referees themselves. Because the, at the end of the day there's VAR, but they have to make those. That's yeah. right. But the referee, the players, they took on the VAR, but the referees at first they were reluctant to go to VAR. Yeah. Well, you know why? Mm -hmm. If there's a, a decision that is iffy, don't waste time. So the time wasting with the VAR was due to the referees, not the players. If they, if one, if <coughs> ten players like the, the French did yesterday, jump at you, mm -hmm. all right? Look, handball, handball. Come on, don't waste time. And and the referee yesterday, he was the best referee of the tournament, I believe. I I've watched all the, all his games, and he's been great. And what it is is that um, he's an imposing referee and the players respect him. You see, they, he, they're sort of, they're guided to sort of um, speak to him. Mm. They're not scared of him, but they respect his decisions. And he also respects the players as well. Yeah. So I think um, the referee, he did a very good job. Okay, well, you have to say on standby, um, making us uh, likely to give us a feel of what the speculations or people's own elations have been as expressed on social media is Selwyn Saki. Sel Selwyn, good morning. Good morning, Rowan. Yeah, and uh, you've been touching base with us on Twitter and the rest. Uh, what, what, what have been the, the whole atmosphere like on social media? It's a virtual world. Well, of course, obviously, um, what we are going to see most of the celebrations of the French team and what we have on the social media feed, especially on the FIFA website first, is, um, a player of one of the teammates is um, Tony Kroos, who has um, given congratulation messages to Rafael Varane and Luka Modric of Kovacic, all in Real Madrid. So, Tony Kroos says, congratulations to the France and Rafael Varane <coughs> team. You deserve to be our successor of the FIFA World Cup, as Tony Kroos is in the last World Cup. Keep your head up, Luka Modric and Matthew Kovacic. You have done very, very well and played a great tournament. So we move forward and Didier Deschamps is also speaking and Didier Deschamps says it was beautiful as the heading says in his social media page. Didier Deschamps took a soaking from his excited players before beginning his post-match press conference and received it in good nature. The France coach departs the tournament with a trophy and having enjoyed a beautiful celebration of football, it was a pleasure to be here in Russia. And we still go ahead and the French president Emmanuel Macron this is the Croatian team dressing room to congratulate the players for their World Cup tournament and also to just say something nice to them. Also, it goes on more Didier Deschamps comments as um, we celebrate the coach as being the third manager to win it both as a player and as a coach. 
So we have other players also celebrating. And then we go to Twitter. And yeah, the topic that we've been having all along on the social media as um, France having a lot of African players. So it states Umtiti coming from um, Cameroon being his roots. Kipembe also from DR Congo, Sidibe, Mali. A lot of DR Congo, Algerians. We have Toliso from Togo. And Zonzi also from DR Congo. Kante from Mali. All these things are going on just to let the African um, fans also know that these players have roots in Africa and the win is for Africa and all. Well, so that's where we transition into bringing to you. The win uh, is for France. Yeah, yeah the Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, football was supposed to have gone home, but it's just across the channel, really. So yeah, I guess England, to <laughs> one hour England should have been oh, getting. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a low blue yeah. right there. Oh no, it just takes some um, sixty-five pounds. You take the tube um, uh, beyond the sea or just underneath the, the sea. The channel or, tunnel. Yeah. Mm. You're in Paris, Paris yeah, yeah, as it is. Too. But let's go to Russia. And uh, we have um, Angela Santi joining us. She, she is a sports journalist uh, based in Russia and watched the tournament. Good morning to you, Angela. You're joining us via Skype, I believe. Good morning to you. Good morning, guys. How are you? You're fine. I see you look all refreshed. Your eyes are puffy. You took some <laughs> Russian beer? <laughs> no, no Russian beer. Just uh, deep and... Uh, well, don't mind me. I mean, it's just how we do it here in Ghana. Uh, you know, we yeah. have all the luggers around. But but let, let's go on. Um, w what really are the Russians saying about how their country organized a tournament? They are extremely proud. Um, yesterday, uh, France against that uh, but still Russian fans were in their numbers in the street to just enjoy the tournament. Even those that didn't get, uh, they were still around in the subway in bars, and that's so proud to be Russian. It's a very good moment to be Russian right now. There's been so much misconception about this country, and now they were able to show their true colors and just how coming they are as to the whole world. Well, so it means that now they have to put into good use all the infrastructure that has been put together. Even some of the cities that really were not footballing cities now have a feel of what football is like, even though, of course, they are used to football as it is. Yeah, uh, but it's a challenge, a challenge because um, Russian football is not where it has to be uh, in terms of uh, football. So, of course, there are some consequences there. There are some people who are very optimistic of um, fish stadium. So cheap. They believe that it's not served anyhow after the tournament. This, I believe, are internally used that rage on between um, the Ministry of Beauty and Sport here in uh, Russia and uh, the population. Not also, also to mention that uh, match tickets were very expensive from the of locals. They were very expensive. So um, people find the option of enjoying the games at the jump like tickets. But still, I mean, it's like tournament, there are always people going to decide the amount of money that we spend and how the infrastructure is going to be used. But all in all, everything was fine in terms of uh, traffic, um, with the subway, everything was free if you had an ID or if you have a media um, accreditation. So just to Russia, uh, organized mm, I can see that you you had a good time and people for people like you yes, have to I return did. to Ghana uh, and then <laughs> others did. who came in from other countries had uh, yes. a visa free entry or or, or or port visas so to speak it also means that mm -hmm. Russia extended their uh, hospitality if there was any at all mm -hmm. now that we know that there, there is uh, apparently to all sorts of people how is that going to have an impact on the Russian people how they view uh, people of other nationalities, etc., and what impact would they have on on the way they live? Well, so we, we, we seem to have uh, lost uh, hair there, but uh, thank you, uh, Angela Santi, uh, a Ghanaian sports journalist. You went to report on the World Cup, but, but Benedict. Mm -hmm. well, um, now we have to look at, apart from France and Croatia, um, what what are the good sides of the other national teams that we can talk about for which we can say there's a future for those countries for which they can build on for the next world cup well quickly we can talk about belgium and then england 
because these are the four teams uh, together with France and Croatia, four team, the last four teams at the competition. And I want to start with England because you look at the average uh, age of the English team, Harry Kane, uh, come down to Raheem Sterling, to the goalkeeper Pickford. These are players that probably can play in the next World Cup. Yeah. So it, it gives them a good opportunity uh, to build on these players as well as uh, look uh, at other players from the junior levels. And I think that gradually they're also trying to do something that the French have been doing over the years. Bringing in some players, players that are already in there that we feel can help our cause. Because you look at Zinedine Zidane, you look at uh, Marcel Desailly and some of the players that even won the 1998 uh, competition. They are players that have African descent, just as we are talking about these same uh, crop of players that have won this competition. So, and it's something that the English are, are also encouraging, bringing in some of these players. Now, you can talk of some Nigerian players doing very well in England, some Ghanaian players like Edin Ketia, who plays for Arsenal. And these are players that they've uh, penned down, they, they are looking at them to add up to the already existing squad. It's only Gary Cahill, who is 32 years, that probably you say, well, he's out of the team. But the players that represented England at this year's competition, if they are to keep these players together and build on it, I believe that the next year's England will be a force to work on with. And for Belgium, uh, yes, we've seen the golden generation. Some of these players definitely would have to make way for others to come in. But the core players like Eden Hazard, you have Kevin De Bruyne, and uh, some other good players in the team are players that will still be around to uh, nurture the young ones that will come in. So the, the young ones that will come will be able to learn from these players. So these two teams are teams that I think that going forward, even before we get to the World Cup in four years, in the Euros in the next two years, these are teams that will do very, very well and will help their countries. Indeed. And of course, the World Cup is the biggest football stage in the world. It's also an opportunity to reward individual excellence. And so there would have been winners of the Golden Boot, mm -hmm. Fair Play Awards and so forth. Selwyn, why don't you walk us through this year's big winners? Sure, Kujo. And uh, as you all know, the French are still contemplating and everything. Everyone knows that they are the winners and they are taking over the whole page. And we go to the individuals. And the Adidas Golden Ball was given to this man, Luka Modric, was the man that won the Golden Ball. We saw his performances in the tournament, what he did in the games and how he led this Croatian team to the final. And even in the final, how much he fought as a player to make sure that his country wins it. But unfortunately, he didn't win it. But then he's the Golden Ball winner as the best player in the tournament. Now, Golden Boot goes to this man here, Englishman Harry Kane, winning the Golden Boot because he scored the highest number of goals. Six goals he scored in the tournament and was one of the best players in that team. He was a very good striker. We know his potential and what he can do. Six goals was enough for him to win the Golden Boot and go on record as one of the players. Now, the Golden Glove went to this goalkeeper here, Thibaut Courtois of Chelsea and Belgium, who had the, number, the highest number of saves and his performances also showed, especially the game against um, Brazil where we saw his individual prowess in that tournament. Now, the FIFA young player comes to this young boy, teenager, 19-year-old, in the one enjoys it, one of the second teenagers to score in the World Cup final aside a player which we know is Pele. Kylian Mbappe joins into that record and wins the young player of the tournament. He's also scored in the final as well. Now we're all going to the FIFA Fair Play trophy goes to the Spanish side. They made the least number of fouls and that's why they win the FIFA Fair Play of the tournament. So that goes to it. And then the man of the match of the game was um, Antoine Griezmann of France. And that's what happens with the individual prices that goes to these players in the tournament. Yeah, well, uh, the individual glory there. Uh, well deserved. Yeah, what well, yeah think? for me, I and think... Mbappe uh, was brilliant, actually. Yeah. They, they got it right this time. Um, <laughs> I, thought, I thought the last World Cup, Manuel Neuer should have been the man you know, mm. of the tournament. Yes, yeah. because if you read the coaching books... Manuel Neuer played two players' positions, the last defender and the goalkeeper. Libero, almost. Oh, he was, he was superb. And, but there was this fascination about a striker or midfielder should win that accolade. I think it's all wrong. And I think if they knew, really knew what they were talking about and where fair play was applied, I thought Manuel Neuer should have won it. I think this time they've got it totally correct right across the board. And it's good to see. It's good to see. Luka Modric, superb. Um, no, I don't think anybody would argue um, that um, he deserves that accolade. Um, and basically, the goalkeeper, Coutoir, 
Mm. Oh, against Brazil. Stop you know, talk six. about rubber man. <laughs> you know? yeah. I think he kept he kept uh, Belgium in for that. And he, oh, he did. He, that, that was easily five goals. Mm. You know, he saved at least four mm. definite goals. The saves were just breathtaking. And it's interesting how a player comes into a tournament being uh, not on top form and then ends <laughs> up playing very well in the tournament. Because look at the here at Manchester United, best ever. Mm. But what did we see of him at the tournament? Crossing or how less. But and uh, Tibo Kotoa was exceptional. Our man Modric. <laughs> well, I don't want to talk about him. <laughs> Modric, Modric, there's no two way about it. Modric deserves to be the yeah. best player of the tournament. And I'm even, even uh, proposing that he should be the best. Uh, FIFA best player as well as oh, in the Ballon d'Or because oh, no the, the argument you what, make for why did you go and read that one? <laughs> well, the <laughs> argument you make for Cristiano Ronaldo that Cristiano Ronaldo won the UEFA Champions League. Modric was also in the same team that Ronaldo yeah. played to win the Champions League. Ronaldo wins those ones and becomes exceptional in those ones yeah. as well. So, but Modric so was also exceptional for Real Madrid. He played a very key I role. I think he in Real plays Madrid. more and complimentary then, role. And then yeah. and then he yeah. gets yeah, into I, the World I Cup final, mm. wins the match <laughs> ball. Uh, so Africa, I, we're always compromising. <laughs> and uh, Ballon d'Or uh, as well. Uh, yeah. but so he's whole, a competitor. But yeah. I think Mbappe yeah. was, I'll, I'll was um, he's, a, he's a typical number nine, but with that um, very fast foot of, uh, of a young Ronaldo. And, uh, you know, he's, he's well, Thierry Henry has already said that Mbappe is better now than Thierry ever was. Yeah. Mm. So he said that he's really excited. To see, he wants to see how Mbappe will grow in, will grow in, in five years. Hours. So. Uh, he's going to be absolutely I think we all look forward to, yeah. well, to his When he's stronger, thing, beefier, mm. and defenders can't easily knock him off the yeah. ball. Like the, thing about Mbappe, yeah. 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 the thing about Mbappe is that... Yeah. The thing about Mbappe is, because he doesn't play in a flashy league, like the English Premier League, that's why people are now seeing him. But if you've been watching and monitoring the French League, Mbappe has been doing this for the last two years. From Monaco, Monaco before, Monaco, yeah, before even joined uh, Paris Saint Germain. So okay. it's just that if you started watching Mbappe at this World Cup, then you'd be surprised that, eh, hey, wow, there's mm -hmm. this young man playing African well. talent, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm keen to hear what everybody else thinks about the World Cup. So why don't you talk to us? Give us a call, 0302 211 691, or you can try 692 at the end, okay? So 0302 211 six nine one or two give us a call tell us what your highlight was of the world cup who was your uh, favorite team and did they uh, disappoint you or did they do exactly as you expected let's talk about every aspect of it from uh, from the fans and wonderful stories about the fans, the Japanese fans, the Senegalese fans, yeah. you know, uh, great things. They did what they won't do yes. in their country. Yeah, that was a behind, good one. Staying behind the yeah. 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 So listen, let's talk about it. Let's talk about your highlights but of the World Cup. What's a platform to advertise to your people in your country? What we're doing here, please do it at home. Mm. What a platform. Yes. You know, they couldn't yes. mm -hmm. have chosen a better platform. Mm. So I think they should follow that up. Yeah. You know, I don't think just leave should. it there. They should follow it up and say, did you see what we did in the yeah. World Cup? Yeah. Do it at home. Well, while we wait for the call, okay, we already have... Uh... Yes, indeed. Uh, Hassan Yakubu is calling us. Uh, Hassan Yakubu from Zebila, is that right? Hassan, good morning. How are you? I'm fine now. It's great to hear from you. Tell us about your experience of the World Cup 2018. Uh, in fact, uh, this World Cup has been wonderful. Uh, at least uh, I've watched, I can say, 2002 World Cup, uh, Korea, Japan, the young man. 2006, Germany, 2010, and 2014. And this World Cup has been the most I mean, difficult to predict <laughs> ever since those uh, uh, four or five World Cups that I've watched. And I mean, it goes to show that uh, football is not changing. Every nation is, uh, knows one or two things about football. And I'm only disappointed that Africa couldn't show such, I mean, intellect or such knowledge about football. I think African teams should rise up. It would be a shame if they increase the slot of the number of teams for Africa and we still perform abysmally like this. Uh, I think uh, the changes the government is trying to bring, they should look at grassroots football. The coast football, they should look at that and it will go a long way to help us. 
Hmm. Thank you. It's a great show you have there. Oh, Thank you're very you. kind, Hassan. Thanks for calling. Uh, George Abwaje is uh, down the road at Spintex. George, good morning. Good morning to all your panelists. Roland, how are you doing? I'm good, Mr. Abwaje. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> I'm so much excited. I think the last time I called on the, on the show, I think your, your late night show, uh, Coach was there, and I said France was going to win the Cup. Mm. Yeah. From the beginning of the World Cup, all my predictions have never failed. I think I'm going to be one of the best... Uh, <laughs> A prophet, eh? Yeah, we'll come, we'll come to your church. Exactly, exactly. My no collection, that though. We, our African team that <laughs> represented us this year were in that um, inspiring, I would say, mm. because um, we miss out a lot. Uh, this tells you that we have a great team, Ghana, and if much is done to our uh, football works, uh, we, we can go for it. So it's, it's quite sad developments coming to Ghana football, and I pray this is resolved as quickly as possible. Look, Sometimes we don't value what we have until we lose it, okay? We might not have, you know, the best of leaders. But please, let's, let's be very, very, very considerate when matters of this nature comes up. Because President Jesse really got far. But out of the blue, something came up. And suddenly, he has been the devil of Ghana football. Forgetting that he has taken us twice to this world stage where we've never been before. Mm. And... It's not fair. Hmm. I'm not saying what he did was good. I, I can't judge because it has not been judged in the, in, in, in the law court. Hmm. We just put things in the public domain to seek public sympathy. And hmm. we all rally behind it. Running the whole show down. Now we are flat down. Let's see how we get up. Have a good morning and a great show. Oh, thank, thank you, you George. George. Thank you. Uh, you know, that was very a, poetic there. An interesting point he raises. It's very difficult to, um, to, to uh, highlight the good of somebody who is currently going through a period of vilification. You know, when your, your, your ills are being pointed out, it's very difficult to highlight the good you've done. But he is right about Chris Yantichi's yes, achievements uh, is. with, is. with, with um, the Black Stars. Eric Arthur is in a Duke room. Eric, good morning. Good morning. Who were you supporting in the final? France. Ah, ah. no surprise there. The <laughs> yeah. African team. Right? I'm sure you have a relative who is in France. No, I don't. But uh, I initially tipped them. I initially tipped them to go to the finals, including Croatia. I took four teams. That is France, Croatia, England. Good morning. Yes, we're listening. It would appear we may have le uh, lost Eric there. Um, no, he's on the line. He's watching or listening ah, to TV. Ah, Eric. So okay, here's you know. a tip. Turn off the volume on your TV, okay, and just listen right. to us on the phone. That right, way you right. wouldn't get the delay, okay? Right. There you go then. So you were saying about the, the four teams you tipped? Yes, I tipped France, Croatia, uh, Belgium, and then England. Okay. But uh, unfortunately, I wanted Croatia, uh, Belgium and France to go to the final. Hmm. hmm. Another prophet in Edukrum, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. So well, tell us your general impressions of the World Cup this year. In fact, it's been good. More surprises. Only that the Africans disappointed us. Hmm. Wow. And I, I, would, I would have preferred that the qualification for the African team should be like that of the South Americans. So that we all play In all the pool. teams together. And then the top five teams will go. They will have a solid team to represent Africa. I see. Hmm. Anyway, but, but coach, uh, as, uh, before Kujo comes in, the, the thing about the African players, if you look at the play of the teams, almost look like we play the same. But I think that perhaps maybe things about mentality, the concentration, the technique, and all that. Those are the things that fill us and fill us uh, all the time, right? You hit the nail right on the head. Two things. Mentality. The coaches, I think, hit a kick tuck of the African teams below the belt. They try to be too tactical in going for draws and all this. No. Listen. Know the quality of your team. African players are fast, we're strong, we're skillful. Get the maximum out of all that. Don't ask them to come defending and do the break. No, the African teams are not good at that. Maybe in the future we may develop to be like that as our local leagues change. But right now, as African players, most of those African players you see on the pitch 
were selected for their respective clubs in Europe or North Africa or wherever. For specific purposes. Thank you. So get the maximum out of that. Don't try to change it. It won't work. And the coaches did that. The most disappointing of the African countries for me was Nigeria. Yeah. They have so much quality, in-depth quality, but their performance was really? just... They look like uh, athletes brought together, really. Yeah, athletes brought together who didn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's even mm -hmm. worse. And that was, the, that was the, my biggest disappointment was with Nigeria. The North African countries, their coaches, again, played totally the wrong strategies for them. For yeah. me, the problem over the years have been two things, organization and the mentality. Organization now have been able to deal with it because of what happened at the previous World Cup. Other African countries took a clue from what happened to Ghana, Ivory Coast, uh, sorry, Cameroon, and then Nigeria. Issues about money and issues about uh, players uh, not willing to train. It happened to Ghana, it happened to Cameroon as well to the extent that even players on the pitch were fighting. Now that bit has been dealt with the organization. So you realize that when Nigeria were going into this tournament, they made the players sign an agreement. Monies were given to players prior to the competition, so the organization bit dealt with, not the mentality. In 2010, when Ericsson, the former English coach, was managing Ivory Coast, he told the Drogba that, Drogba, I think that this year we have the best team, we have quality players, because all these players we've assembled together are players that are playing at the top level of football. I think that we can win the World Cup on an African soil. Do you know what Drogba told him? No, I don't think we can win it. Why? Because he feels that we, we are not yet there. But the coach is telling him that he <laughs> thinks we are there and that we have good players. But Drogba told the coach that we can't win it because Spain, Germany are all coming. Our best will be to qualify out of the group and probably maybe reach the quarterfinals, which we are noted of uh, getting to. Now, Drogba himself, I'm very, very excited that today he granted an interview was talking about how Africans should for uh, now look forward to winning the World Cup and not probably thinking of getting into the semi-finals because now there has been an issue about us uh, trying to see which African team can go a step further than what Ghana and all the other countries have and done. And by the by time it. we win it, my grandchildren... Exactly. Will win. So I believe that the mentality is also changing. Now what we have to do is we should empower these players and empower managers. Let's get in managers from the African continent. That I feel they can all be part of the process. And forget about bringing in Europeans. So, for instance, Ghana with Chrisiapia, we go to Ivory Coast, we get a manager in the country. What Senegal is doing with Ali Sisi. These people are full part of the process that, yes, it is our process and it's, it's our system and it's something we want to achieve. So, let's go out there. Now, the mentality bit also dealt with because now these players have realized that the players we play with abroad are players that come to the World Cup. I play with uh, Mbappe. At club level, I play with the top, top players in the English Premier League. So what is it that when we come to the World Cup, I can also not do? Because these are players I train with. I play with them every day. So I can also do the same. So we need to empower players and also the coaches here. So they take us to the tournament. And I feel that when, if you do that, very soon an African team can get to the final. When and win African it. teams go to Europe, they mm. have one mentality. When they come back to their system where it's mainly Africans, their mentality switches back to the African mentality. Well, but coach, at least thank God that the tournament is not being you, played in yeah, Africa. And we don't have, you see, yeah. the thing is, these guys, you know, you're Chelsea, Arsenal, wherever. How much money are you not getting? Mm. Right? Listen, if I was ever sports minister, all Ghanaian players, right, professionals, mm -hmm. you will play for the nation. If you won't, don't play. Because it's playing... Free? Yes, yes. It's playing for your nation that boosts up your income. When you play a World Cup, all right, your income will improve by 30 to 50%, mm. all right? Especially on your next transfer. Well, Coach, that's debatable because, you know, the problem here, the problem here, and especially some of the things that our players keep telling us, and I've always been saying this, if I get injured, what happens to me? But with, with the Europeans, could you know with the Europeans, there's always a system and so there's something for these players that something called, should even get injured. There's something called the insurance. Take care of you. There's something called but insurance. But here it doesn't work. No, here, here, no, no. You can insure these players abroad. Yeah, yeah you can. Have to be you don't have to insure uh, them here. Yeah. But, but, but I've got to ask. Done. No, no, that's, that's, what, what, I'm that's the idea I've, that I'm trying to bring in. I've got to ask this question. That's the idea I'm trying to bring in. Are we being 
held to ransom yes. by our stars because perhaps there aren't enough of them. Are we developing enough stars mm. so that um, you know we will be able to dominate the world stage? You know, like how we used to with players yeah. like Tony Abua and mm. Abedipile and so forth. It's been too long since we had players like that. We'll talk more about that in a bit. But Selwyn uh, has a few tweets that uh, I think we ought to pay some attention to. What have you got there? Well, yeah, we are, we are going to talk about the memories that the Russia World Cup has left us with, and we have a number of them. The first one was Ronaldo's hat-trick versus Spain. As we know, the two Iberian sides met, and it was a cracker for them, and Ronaldo beat Spain, which was 3-3 in the results, but Ronaldo had to score a strong hat-trick, which was very significant. Now, one thing that we also saw was Mexico beating Germany in the group stage. It was a very, very big game and Mexico surprised Germany and as well Germany in the end was eliminated from the tournaments. Now another one was Iceland against Argentina and Messi's penalty was being saved. You know after the um, Portugal game a lot of people were expecting that Messi is going to reply Ronaldo's performance but then his penalty was even saved against Iceland. And also we will go to South Korea eliminating Germany from the tournament. That was a big one in the tournament as Korea beat Germany and eliminated them from the tournament. Also the host nation Russia beat the Spanish champions, Spain, in that knockout stage game. And that was also one of the big ones. And then Belgium coming back to beat Japan in the quarterfinal stage. That was also a very big game. You know, Japan had already scored two goals, and Belgium came back and won 3-2. England also ending their penalty case. England has never, ever won a penalty shootout in the World Cup. But this time in the 2018, they did it fantastically. Now, Croatia also entering the World Cup final for the first time was something that we saw. And then to end with the memories of the World Cup, Obviously, France winning the World Cup after 20 years in 1998. Right, well, that's certainly a memorable tournament, mm. right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why don't we very quickly wrap up? Final thoughts on uh, World Cup 2018 and uh, looking into the future, coach? Final thought great tournament. Um, compliments, full compliments to the Russians. Organization superb. The stadia, fantastic. Um, they have done a great job. FIFA organization carrying out the tournament, bringing in the VAR, very well done. The players, the teams, contribution, absolutely fantastic. Uh, entertainment value, top notch, mm. top notch. So for me, I've enjoyed the tournament. Um, my biggest disappointment is with the African teams, and it comes down to mentality, mm. right? Now, the England players, play they give their money to charity yeah all right they are in a country that's rich we are in a country that's potentially rich we are a rich country but we're poor in our the way we do things mm -hmm. now i personally believe that if i i'm telling everybody if i ever was ever in a position mm. to run ghana football all right listen the number of the amount of talent in ghana is phenomenal if we took the right attitude, we could get rid of all the guys right now and still produce a top-class world team-beating squad. I'm telling you, from Ghana, mm. the talent is here, right? So we've got to stop mollycuddling the people who are holding the country to ransom, right? And just get on the job. Insurance, you'll be fully insured abroad, all right? According to the wages you're earning. Full stop. So thousand if you're Ghana. injured, no problem. Hmm. Uh, the players earn right. thousand Ghana. Ghana. So it's not for you to reply. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Right. Well, oh, I wish we could uh, have taken some thoughts from Benedict, but I'm told no, that uh, he, it's time he, for us to. He has sports every day. <laughs> <so> <laughs> 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 <laughs>